Years ago, when I was a youth minister, one Ash Wednesday, I brought my high school teens down to a diocesan Ash Wednesday mass. It had never happened before, and even looking back now, I can only attribute it to the Lord that we made the trip into downtown Phoenix to bring our students to this special Ash Wednesday Mass. And the priest celebrating that Mass was Father John Parks, who is now Blessed Is She's spiritual advisor. And I will never forget the homily that he preached that Ash Wednesday because it changed my life. It's changed every Lent since. Father Parks, in that homily, suggested that rather than telling God what we were going to do for Lent, that we would ask him what we should do for Lent. <laughs> A totally novel concept. And I remember sitting in the pews, technically it was a theater, so in my seat and thinking, that's really interesting and exciting and, and something about that seems right. <laughs> like I should involve God in my plans for Lent. But I'd already made a decision. I had already decided, seeing all of my many faults, that I was going to start with gossip. I wanted to root gossip out of my life. And so I'd uh, made a plan for my Lenten penance that I was going to give up gossip. So Mass continued, I went forward, received Holy Communion, and when I came back to my seat and I knelt, I prayed and I said, Lord, um, you know that I need to give up gossip and I want to give up gossip, God, so I'm, I'm going to do that. But is there anything else you want me to do? What do you want me to do for Lent? And I knelt quietly and I was surprised by the gentle voice that that I perceived speaking in my heart, the voice of God. And he said to me, spend time with me every day. And I, I remember like, what? <laughs> like, it's too easy. What are you talking about? Like, I have a prayer life. I am a youth minister. And the truth is I did have a prayer life, but it was totally on my terms. It was when I wanted to for however long I wanted to or had time for in my calendar. It was always about what I wanted it to be about. It wasn't on God's terms, and it certainly wasn't first thing in the morning. And I felt the Lord inviting me, inviting me, that's the key word, ever so gently, to learn to pray, to think of prayer as spending time with God. Not only did that Lenten penance change my Lent, it changed my life. It's the reason that I have a daily intimate, um, dynamic, personal relationship with God now because, because God invited me into that daily, intimate, personal, dynamic conversation every day that Lent. And I don't know about you, but for me, this was, this was different, <laughs> to say the least. It's a different approach to prayer, a different approach to Lent than most of us take. Most years, most of us pick a penance based on uh, what we know we need, what we think we need. And we either struggle through or <laughs> conquer valiantly and feel pretty good about ourselves for how we handled Lent. We do it for the Lord, right? Out of love for the Lord, a, a desire to grow in virtue, to be better, uh, to amend our ways, but we don't always do it with the Lord. <laughs> we forget that he wants to do Lent and really all of our life with God. You see, the primary purpose of Lent is union with Jesus. Union with Jesus in the desert while he's fasting, union with Jesus in his suffering, in his passion, and union with Jesus in his death on the cross so that we can be one with him in his resurrection and in heaven with him forever. That's what we're practicing for every Lent, to become one with him, to become like him. The prophet Joel, we read this reading every year on Lent, chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. God says through his prophet, Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping and with mourning, rend your hearts, not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger 
and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. You know, this definition of the Lord, the Lord, your God, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, this is the definition of God from God. He defines himself to Moses. So he's declaring again through his prophet, this is who I am. Return to me. This is who I am. I'm full of love and mercy. I want your heart, not just your activity. I don't just want your behaviors to change. I want you to offer, to rend your heart. The call this Lent and the rest of our lives is not just to repentance, it's to conversion a change of life, a heart transformation. So if you, like me, need a heart transformation, a change of hearts, that's what God's asking us to offer to him this Lent. So let's ask him about it. He knows our hearts better than we do. It really is that simple. That's what I'm proposing is that we take Father Parks's very good advice and ask God, what he wants us to do for Lent. I'm inviting you to discern, not decide about your penance, to discern with God, not to decide for God. Yes, 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 to prayer, fasting, almsgiving, all that the church prescribes to help us to come into union with Jesus. But bring God into that conversation. As you discern, your Lenten penance. Do it with God, not only for God, because he knows your heart, your struggles, your weakness. He knows your strengths too, better than you do. And I I promise you, he'll surprise you with his gentleness, this God who is full of love and mercy. The thing about bringing God into this discernment of Lent, rather than Uh, you know, pushing through and doing it on our own, in our own very poor and weak strength, is that God wants to get at the root, the root of what's going on with us. But you and I, when we pick our Lenten penances, usually we're just whacking at the weeds. And what ends up happening is they grow back. They always come back because we haven't treated the heart condition beneath that behavior beneath that sin, that vice. But God, God wants to show us the root. He wants to get at the root to treat the heart condition underneath the behavior that we want to change because what he's after is conversion, is heart transformation, a change of life that we would become like him, one with him this Lent. So let's pray right now. Let's ask the Lord, What do you want me to do for Lent? And then we wait and we listen. I I wouldn't be surprised if even as we pray in this moment that something pops into your head. Go with that. Share it with someone. Share it with a, a, a spiritual friend, a mentor, your spiritual director. Always bring it to wise counsel. Ask for confirmation. God, is this is this really what you want me to do? But keep praying and waiting. Even if you don't hear right away, the Lord delights in your your openness to wait upon him, to listen for his voice. So let's ask him now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God, you are full of love and mercy. You're here. And you want our hearts. You don't just want our good behavior. So Lord, would you reveal now what you desire for us to do? Would you treat the heart condition that's at the root of our weakness and our sin? Would you come with your gentleness, your spirit of wisdom, your light, Speak into our hearts, Lord. We give you permission. Use our imagination. Don't be surprised if it just sounds like your thinking voice. A good idea pops into your head. Come, Holy Spirit. What do you want us to do for Lent?
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I would love to hear what God is calling you to this Lent. Uh, Share it in the comments below and don't be discouraged if you don't know just yet. Keep waiting on the Lord. Keep asking. Keep listening. I promise he won't disappoint you. We love you. God bless you.